Hi everybody, it's 314 React here. Today we're going to be looking at NVIDIA's new NIS, which is their kind of version of AMD's FSR. So it's a spatial scaling algorithm that will allow you to upscale games from a lower resolution in a way that's less advanced than DLSS. S. Um, they've also released DLSS 2.3, but I think I've been using that DLL for weeks now. Um, so the official release of that isn't too much for me. But what we're mainly interested in is the image scaling. Um, so you can basically go into the driver. It will work on basically any game, unlike DLSS, which is the really good point of this. And I believe it will work on any GPU as well. And it's open source, I believe as well, which is interesting for NVIDIA. And I'm hoping they do this with DLSS one day, that you can just enable DLSS for any game via the driver, but I'm hoping this is the first step towards that. So essentially you go into the driver, set a scaling percentage, then set your game to an input resolution, and it will scale that up. What you need to do is you need to go to GeForce Experience or just download the driver directly. And the version you need is 496.76, and the release date for that was the 16th of November, 2021. Once that's downloaded, you can open up the NVIDIA control panel or you can go to the settings under the GeForce Experience and you can just turn the image scaling on and the screen will blank out for a second. And then you can set the percentage render resolution for it to input here. And I've got it set to 1440p because I found that that generally what has the best upscaling performance and image quality. You can also set it through the control panel here I'd recommend setting it through the GeForce Experience because it's just easier to set the resolution you want rather than having to find out what the number is. You can just select from here. I should also notice that under the control panel here, you can go to this bit and turn on the overlay indicator, which turns on a symbol at the top left hand corner. And when that's blue, the upscaling has not been applied. And when it's green, it is being applied. So this is a good way to show whether the upscaling is working or not. Uh, so you can tweak it how you want, make sure it's doing it correctly and make sure the icon's green so it is upscaling. And then when you're happy with it, you can turn the overlay indicator off. There's also a menu you can reach by pressing Alt F3, which allows you to get to various filters within GeForce Experience, including sharpening, which I will use later on in the video. You won't see the indicator or the menus load up in the recording because Shadow Play doesn't record those. So if I mention the icon in the corner or a menu with sharpening and you don't see it, that's why. So that's basically that. I mean, there'll be links in the description for some reviews on it, how to set it up, uh, stuff like that. But what I'm mainly here for is to see how well it runs with Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Because Ghost Recon Breakpoint uses uh, temporal anti-aliasing, which is fairly par for the course for the past few years of video games. But when you're running at 4K at top settings, even on a 3090, it still runs around 50 to 60 frames a second. So there's an additional uh, setting called temporal injection, which I think is similar to checkboarding or something like that, checkerboarding. That introduces a number of visual artifacts. And what I wanted to see was whether 4K using NVIDIA's image upscaler would be better looking than 4K with the temporal injection and to see what the performance was. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the game and we're gonna load up with 4K with temporal injection. We're gonna have a look at the General, general image quality and frame rate. And then we're gonna look at the game with 4K without temporal injection, the image quality and the frame rate. And then we're gonna knock the in-game resolution down to 1440p so that it matches this. So 67% of my render resolution at 1440p internal, then it'll be upscaled to 4K. And we'll see again how that looks and how that plays. Oh, we'll also be looking at some iCat as well which is NVIDIA's new image comparison tool where you can drag and drop screenshots in and do that cool thing where you can scan between the screenshots to see the difference. And we're gonna look at some static screenshots between Breakpoint if we can. So let's jump right into the game. So what we're gonna do first is we can look at some of the settings. So we're running at uh, 4K, VSync on, text quality ultimate. HDR's off, temporal injection we're gonna turn on. Uh, everything else is at ultimate absolutely maxed out okay so again we're running with an rtx 3090 here um and we're running 73 frames a second 74 frames a second here this is about the sort of performance i usually get in this game with the temporal injection on so it's a fairly good frame rate but it may be difficult to see through youtube or it may be more obvious you can see there's certain odd pixelation in the vegetation and especially in distant objects as they go past and come into range. You can see there's a certain blur on some of the things. It's not as sharp as it should be, 
And that's because of the temporal injection, which is, uh, let's see what the in-game description of that actually is. Temporal injection represents technology using samples from many frames to produce crisp high resolution images while keeping a smooth frame rate. Available only if AA is set to temporal AA. I mean, I thought that's what temporal AA did anyway, but I think it's doing something else, some extra. <laughs> Available only if AA is set to temporal AA. Well, AA is either on or off. I think the anti-aliasing is by default is just some sort of TAA. And then this temporal ejection is something else. And I think the way they've worded it is just the talk around it, the fact that it's basically checkerboarding, where it's probably just um, using checkered boarded parts of prior frames with the temporal anti-aliasing somehow. But it does look really good in static shots, but when you're moving around and stuff, when you've got distant vegetation, especially when a drone flies over, you can really see it. You can probably see it kind of in the distant vegetation there, just sort of moving around. It's kind of an odd kind of blur to it. So find some area where there's some trees, and hopefully we'll have a drone go up over at some point. So you can see it in the birds there flying around, actually. You can see this kind of odd pixelation around their wings. So you can kind of see there's something odd and pixelated about their wings with some weird blur, especially in that distant area. And also kind of around the leaves of trees there. And that's due to the uh, temporal injection. So if we turn the temporal injection off, you can now see that the there's still a bit of blur around their wings due to the temporal aliasing, but it's a lot less pixelated. There's a lot more detail in them. And that's where the temporal injection really shows its sort of limitations. It's with smaller moving objects, uh, because obviously you're getting sort of the data from previous frames being checkerboarded in, so it's going to look less detailed. So it looks a lot clearer there, and the leaves also look a lot clearer. And we're about 70 frames a second there. So if we turn the temporal injection back on, you can see we now go up to 90 frames a second. So that's about 20 frames a second added, but you can see the sort of visual degradation in distant moving objects. Um, it also blurs up some of the grass there in the distance as well. Now if we turn around to this area here, you can see again, perfectly fine looking Im image. Uh, we've got 70 frames a second there. The leaves and stuff look fine. Not too bad, but you can see this because they're moving and some of them are in the distance and they're more finer details. You can see where they're sort of image quality breaks down, especially in some of those distant trees on the right and in the background high up on the left there. So when we turn temporal injection off, you can see the leaves become much sharper uh, and much better looking. It's, and every, the, the, the overall image just looks a lot more sharper. The grass in the distance looks better. So again, those details and the moving objects in the background. But the main impact here is that the frame rate has now gone from 70 to 55, uh, which is obviously not good. Temporal injection isn't necessarily a completely bad thing. For me, it's got a subjective kind of thing to it, or it gives this game a unique kind of look, but objectively, it's not good. We want to keep the image quality high and the frame rate high as well. Now, as for why they haven't put DLSS in Breakpoint, I have no idea because it's exactly the same game engine as Rainbow Six, and that has DLSS, and that doubled the performance and made it look incredible. But let's see what we can do with NIS. So the first thing we're gonna do is, of course, go to the menu. Uh, it's here, and we're going to turn that temporal injection off. Um, so remember, we're getting about 71 frames there with it on, 55 with it off. Uh, and then we're going to set the resolution down to 1440p. Hit apply. Now upscaling 1440p to 4K. And let's go back to the game. And as you can see here, we're now running 83 frames a second, 82 frames a second there. Now there's a little bit of blur here in the background, but I still think it looks a little bit sharper. And if you look at those birds flying around, there's less pixelation going on with them when they're flying around with the distant objects and things like that. We're getting about 10 frames a second better than what we were getting before. And the output to my monitor is 3840 by 2160. So just looking at this, it's hard to tell, but I think this does look marginally better than having temporal injection on. Because although you've still got a little bit of blur, the sort of sharpness isn't too high that it's giving any obvious aliasing. There's still a bit of blur from the TAA, but overall you're not losing too much detail on those distant objects, especially just keep an eye on those birds' wings as they fly around. You're not seeing weird pixelation there, and we're getting 10 frames extra. So let's have a look at this overall. Now, I'm fairly certain NIS is working properly here because it's green in the corner, the overlay's on but it's not as sharp as I've seen in screenshots. So I'm wondering if they've gone in and, uh, so I wonder if they've gone in and 
adjusted the image sharpening a bit. Uh-oh. And we duck down very quickly. I have to keep an eye on this drone as it goes over. Do not devolve into a horribly pixely mess. I mean, there's still a bit of an issue there where the sort of uh, detail in the pixels is just disappearing too far away. But it still looks better than the sort of bird wing effect we were getting. Temporal injection. And with the sharpening on, it clears up kind of a bit of that blur. Obviously, we're getting a bit of over sharpening there, as you can see. So maybe we turn that down to 30% image sharpening, maybe 25%. So that now, with the sharpening up at 25%, that is now looking more comparative towards the 4K without temporal injection. But we are still getting a nice high frame rate out of it. I think that looks pretty good. So let's turn that image sharpening down. And then let's turn the resolution back up to 4K. So that's native 4K, no temporal injection. And let's turn on temporal injection at 4K. And now let's turn on NIS, upscaling from 1440p without temporal injection. And then let's turn that sharpening on to 25%. And let's do a direct comparison between NIS from 1440p to 4K with 25% sharpening without temporal injection. And then let's do one last comparison from this native 4K, no temporal injection to NIS from 1440p to 4K. And that's with 25% sharpening as well. I think that looks comparatively pretty good so i think given the extra performance and the fact that with temporal injection turned off you don't get the weird pixelation on various uh, details and without dlss being implemented in this game which should fix everything i think nis is a pretty good solution for this game because you're getting like 30 frames extra from native 4k you're still getting a really good detail and the upscale is pretty neat. Found that if you put it to 1080p, 50% resolution, then it does look a bit too blurry. You can have like 86%, but this game doesn't seem to support that resolution that it upscales from. So 1440p is the sort of best sweet spot there. There's still a little bit of detail being lost on those bird's wings. But if we turn on the temporal injection, yeah, you can really see the pixelation in the bird's wings there because even the upscaler can't deal with that. Oof, nasty. And the frame rate is at 92 though. So you could double it up, you could put NIS on 4040p and temporal injection and really get your frame rate high. I don't know why they haven't put DLSS in, but if they put DLSS 2.3 into this game, I think you'd be able to max this game's frame rate out. You'd be hitting like 100 frames here. Better than native 4K with TAA. You'd have none of these pixelated effects. So I really don't know why they don't just put DLSS in. It's not quite perfect. It's not quite perfect, and I don't know how it compares to AMD's solution here. But the fact that it works in any game, and the fact that it can clean up Breakpoint a bit with its horrible temporal injection, maybe even turn the sharpening up to 30%, it means it's a pretty damn good solution. I mean, that looks really good. The only thing I imagine it would affect is some of the resolution-dependent stuff, like screen space reflections and things like that. So you may have lower resolutions uh, in reflections and things. Um, maybe ambient occlusion if that's dependent on resolution. So there's going to be some caveats to this, obviously. I, I imagine the caveats of turning on temporal injection are outweighed by the benefits of this. I've got my three screenshots out. I've got 4K native, 4K NIS 1440, and 4K with injection. Uh, I'll put a link in the description where you can download iCat. Let's fire it up. You don't need to install it or anything. It just opens up. So let's go here. See if we can just drag all three of these in and see what happens. Okay. So yeah, you can just drag in your images. Uh, so I've dragged in th all three there, and you can select what one goes each side. And you can just seamlessly uh, slide between them. That's actually immensely awesome. So if we go to 4K native on the left side, and on the right side we go to with injection, temporal injection makes it look a little bit washed out is interesting never really noticed that before but you can definitely tell there as we go between it 4k native on the left and uh, temporal injection 
on the right. You can definitely see that sharpness level. And yeah, it's really washed out, isn't it? Never noticed that before. I'm fairly certain that's not an environmental effect or anything. Especially those distant trees. Look at the detail lost on that there as you go between it. Man. Nasty. And then when you combine that with like the pixelated movement of distant things. Oof. It looks like there's even leaves missing in that area there. Like there. But of course you do get like an extra 20 frames out of it. And this just highlights even more. So if we now put uh, 4K NIS from 1440p on the right, look at that. Like you can see the, uh, it's no longer washed out like it was. And it's actually much closer. Like it's not perfect, there's like blur around here. But it's still, it's not washing the image out. You obviously don't get that horribly pixelated movement in you know, when you're actually in gameplay. Oddly enough, it looks like there's extra shadowing there, like under that tree. Or is that extra shadowing? Mm, I think that may just be less accurate shadowing, because on the 4K native you can see there's like a much more softer shadow under the tree there, more realistic. And as you drag it over, you've got a much more harsh shadow coming down. So I imagine that's probably an artifact of where the resolution is just lower and it's got less sampling points for screen space shadows, I'm guessing. Not 100%. That's interesting though. It's interesting how the resolution changes that. It could even be as the time of day has changed a little bit there. I don't know. That's a tricky one. But then the other shadows haven't moved that much. But then the shadows on the ground there, you can definitely see there's some detail changed in them. So I imagine the shadows uh, are related to screen resolution in some way. Yeah, because as you scroll past, you can see it's less detailed. Yeah, you can, there's some, definitely some detail being dropped there. In fact, it looks like there might even be some LOD drops there. Hard to tell. You can see the leaves around that tree trunk are changing. So it could be low resolution means that, um, you know, low res assets kick in at an earlier distance because they don't expect you to see those details at low resolution. From a resolution perspective, it does look better than with temporal injection. You're still losing object detail with that lower resolution. But obviously the upscaling isn't gonna be able to do anything about. And you can see in the little details of the trees here, there's extra blur but not too much loss of detail from what you'd expect and you get a huge frame rate boost of like 30 frames now let's uh, load up on the left here 4k with temporal injection and do a direct comparison between temporal injection and the nis upscaling from 1440p mm -hmm. as you can see uh, obviously a lot blurrier not a lot, but noticeably blurrier because of the low resolution it's upscaling from. Because this isn't as smart as DLSS. It's not actually generating new data using ML and it hasn't got any uh, motion vectors or anything smart like that. It's just uh, basically a raw upscaler that's a bit smarter than a, you know, sort of a bilinear, I guess is the right term, solution. Like if you just ran 1440p on your 4K monitor it's better than that. But again, it's just weird, the washed out look of uh, the temporal injection. I mean, just from these screenshots when it's still, I'd probably go with 4K with injection. But in actual movement, when you're actually playing the game, the extra frame rate, and again, that um, minimization of horrible checkerboarding in moving objects in the distance, I'd probably go for 4K NIS 1440. Let's see if we can get some zoom in on this. Zoom right in. Zoom into these trees here where the detail is. Yeah. So you can see there kind of like the bird's wing is a bit off where it's like pixel, 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 pixel. Clearly from the checkerboarding. It's a really tough one. In some ways, NIS looks better. In some ways it looks worse. In fact, you can see there that tiny bit of like leaf there. You can see there's like detail missing, detail missing, detail missing. But on the upscaled version, it's more consistent. 
and that's what I mean by consistency. It could just be coincidence that that was moving in the wind and uh, some of the pixels went sub-pixel and couldn't be rendered either way. But And that LOD loss of detail is something to worry about as well. Overall, I would uh, give it a go yourself, follow the instructions uh, from the link in the description and see what sort of performance you can get out of this. If you can find a way to get Breakpoint running at a different resolution as well, because another another way we could do it to get uh, the better performance and not lose so much IQ would be to run it at 85%. So we'd be running uh, uh, internally 3264 by 1836 and then uh, scale that to 4K, but Breakpoint doesn't have this resolution. I'm not sure there's a way to force Breakpoint to go to that resolution. I'm just going to do a quick Google. So yeah, just a quick look on Google. I don't I'm not 100% sure there's a way to force Breakpoint to go into unique resolutions like that. There may be a way to force a custom resolution through the drivers, uh, through the control panel. I think these resolutions are all unlocked as custom resolutions anyway when you enable scaling. Yeah, you can see it here. So I imagine you could probably set the desktop to 3264 by 836 and then boot up into Breakpoint and get it through that. But I don't really want to set my desktop to that. So 1440p is the best solution at the moment. That was all in Vulkan, by the way, just in case you were wondering just to get that better performance. I imagine when you're running DirectX it would look the same, but you could probably knock 10 FPS off of all the results um, if you're running NVIDIA hardware. Don't know about AMD, uh, and I don't know about anything below probably the 2000 series. So yeah, that's an interesting looking at things. This NIS tech is really good, and I imagine just like with DLSS, they're gonna improve it over time and quite rapidly as well. So hopefully it'll be able to give you a better image quality over time. And hopefully they just introduced DLSS into Breakpoint and that solves every problem there is. This was a fun exercise. I hope you enjoyed it. Do leave a like and a comment. Let me know what other games you think I could try this on. Uh, let me know the results you've had. And yeah, do check out iCat. It's, it's really good, actually. I really like it. Uh, the fact you don't have to install it, the fact you can just drag and drop in your images and select between them and left to right. It's really cool. I'm going to use it in future for a lot of my other videos on graphics and stuff. It's really easy for comparison. Please do like and subscribe. Tick the little bell. It helps all that stuff and I will see you in the next video.